Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining tonight's FIA Goals and Track webinar, proudly presented by Michelin. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we are all dialing in from. I would also like to pay my respect to elders past and present. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Priyanka Chada. I work with Motorsport Australia and manage our participation programs such as Goals on Track. Tonight, we're very fortunate to have Jahim Tanrir join us. Thank you so much for joining us, Jahim. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Just to quickly introduce Jahin. Jahin is an award-winning keynote and three-time TEDx speaker. He's on a uh, board of directors and a multi multicultural youth advocate. Jahin is also the founder and CEO of Breathe, which is an organization that helps people improve their public speaking confidence and communication skills. So over the course of the last uh, few months, we've introduced the goals and track Pathways events where girls aged 15 to 22 have the opportunity to connect and network with our goals and track ambassadors, our champions, and other people in the industry. Jahin is here to share a few tips of the trade to improve your communication skills and also network more effectively. So, if you're all set to dive into your discussion, over to you, Jahin. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Priyanka. And good evening, everyone. And welcome to today's session on communication and networking, especially in the context of motorsport. So this is quite surreal to me because I'm a massive motorsport fanatic. I love it, uh, especially since Drive to Survive came out a couple of years ago. And so being able to partner up, but also contribute to this fantastic cause is absolutely surreal. So thank you so much for having me. So today we're going to cover all things communication, networking, how to speak confidently, and really how to get into any room, speak to someone who might seem very intimidating, but get over that. How to get over the fear of speaking to someone intimidating and really have that conversation that you want, whether it's for a job, to progress in your career, professional growth, whatever it is. How can we speak to someone with confidence and not get those butterflies that we often get, that, that you know dryness in our mouth? that, oh, I'm just going to stuff up. They're not going to listen to me. How do we get over that? So that's what we're going to touch up on today. And so to help with that, um, I'm going to have a PowerPoint up. One thing about PowerPoints, I actually hate PowerPoints. I'm a massive PowerPoint hater. But the reality is a lot of us require audio or visual aids just for communication. And so you don't have to stare at my face the entire time. There'll be a PowerPoint there just for you to look at. And I can also share the PowerPoint as a resource after today's session. And second of all, I also don't like when somebody speaks to me for 60 to 90 minutes straight speaking at me. So if you have any questions, thoughts, opinions, anything you disagree with, challenges, whatever it is, please feel free to put it down into the chat function below. I'll get to everything. Obviously, if time um, allows and nothing's off the table, I'm very, very comfortable to talk about fear or vulnerability or failures. So if you do have any questions throughout today's session, please feel free to put in the um, Q&A below. Again, nothing's off the table. I'm very comfortable to ask if you have any questions about anything related to communication or networking or things that have gone wrong. And yeah, so without any further ado, let's get stuck into it. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. We've already, already got our first question. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. This is the energy that we need. It's 6.35, we want more energy like that. So if you have any questions, please put it down below. And so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Priyanka, can you see my screen perfectly? Fantastic. Love thumbs up. So a bit of context before we do get started. Um, I'm part of Breathe. So Breathe is a social ed tech social enterprise that I started at the beginning of this year, basically to provide public speaking education, communication skills, networking skills, job interview skills to young people to young professionals to ensure that this is accessible, this is culture competent, and most importantly, this is relevant. And so moving forward, my main aim is to make communication fun. And so when I think of communication, how we can convey ourselves in a networking setting, this human being is one of the first people that comes to my mind. And I'm sure all of you know, Daniel Ricardo. But the reason being, the reason I love talking about Daniel Ricardo when it comes to public speaking or communication is because the way this person communicates is honestly incredible. Not because of what he's saying, but the way he's saying it. The way he's smiling, the way he uses arms, the energy, the flow. You just want to talk to this person. You just want to be around this person. And that's one of the main things about networking 
It's not about getting something out of someone else. It's about making them feel welcomed. And then you can, you know, have a gauge and talk about growth and ask them questions. But the most important part about networking before anything isn't, you know, you're going in there with the intention of getting a job or getting an internship or getting an opportunity. No, it's about building a relationship, building a comfortable, you know, creating great first impression and ensuring that you're both in a very, you know, comfortable level. And there are very fundamental things that we'll cover today very briefly, like smiling, like having fun, like using your body language that you can use. And I also believe you've got an event coming up on the 19th of August uh, for the Pathways event. So this will be a really, really, really good preparation so that you can go to that event in person and just speak with confidence, whether it's a CEO or executive or somebody that you really want to talk to, but you feel a little intimidated. These are the skills that you can use to just talk to talk to them freely with confidence and just just have fun more than anything. Because what do you have to lose? As young people, as part of these programs, as early career professionals, you want to make the most of it. You want to take that shot. Events like this are fantastic. How do we take that shot? I'll explain as we go through today's session. And so a bit about me, my name is Jaheen. I'm 21. I'm not an old person, I promise you. I'm relatively still young. And I've had the privilege of doing a lot of public speaking, communication, networking, yada, yada, yada. But the reality is I started very, very young, but with a lot of social anxiety. So that's me growing up. I think I was about seven, eight years old there. I had a lot of social anxiety. I did not know how to communicate. I was very afraid of communication. Not because I didn't have a lot to say, trust me. I wanted to say so many things, but I was just afraid. And so my growth and starting Breathe was all about, yes, I've had the privilege of being TED Talks, keynote speeches, but I also know how it feels to be afraid. Three in four people have a fear of public speaking, fear, fear of uh, communication. People would rather be dead in the coffin than give a eulogy at the funeral. That's real life science backed you know, research that has found. But how do you overcome that? There's very simple things that you can overcome. And we'll discuss today. And if you have any questions specifically on things like body language, how, what do you say, all these things, please feel free to put it down in the chat function again. And we'll also cover networking. So for instance, you know, you grab a coffee with someone. What do you say? What does it mean to network? What are some questions to ask? What are some questions that work? What are, what are some questions that don't work? We'll cover all these things and we'll make communication comfortable for you. Because again, networking is one of those things where it seems so difficult. It seems like, oh, what is networking? Do I have to be in a suit all the time? No, networking is literally having a conversation with one another with a goal in mind. And if we can have fun with that, trust me, the event that you have on the 19th of August, as well as the events that you have in your entire career, if you can make it easier, if you can have fun with that, the possibilities are endless. So let's have fun. Let's have conversations. And if you have any questions, again, please feel free to let me know. I want this to be as transactional back and forth as possible instead of me just, you know, sharing my story and my experience all the time. I want to be able to have that conversation. And so, uh, again, a bit of context where, where I started with the breathe was on TikTok. Funnily enough, I wanted to know if people actually cared about communication and public speaking, all these things. And that went well. And so that's where breathe started. And so today, again, without further ado, and you know a little bit about me, uh, I want to get stuck into fundamentals when it comes to communication and networking. And then we'll get into what to actually say during the networking session, especially when you're talking to int intimidating individuals. And then we'll talk about mindset. So you, you, most cases, you'll have people around you that you're comfortable with, but there may be some cases where you're just in the room with a CEO or an executive or someone who's much higher than you, or you think they're much higher than you. How do you have that conversation? We'll, we'll tap into that. I'll give you some examples of questions to ask, what not to ask, and we'll have a conversation there. And I can also see some, there's like three questions already. Fantastic. Love that. Keep that coming. I'll endeavor to ask all those questions. And if I see those numbers add up, I'll keep this presentation short and I'll start answering those questions as well. So please feel free to put it down um, into the chat function. I'm very, very excited to answer them. Okay. so. You've got an event, there's a lot of people that you have to talk to, you're a little afraid, what do I say, how do I say it, how do I communicate? If you remember anything away from today's session, I want you to remember four letters. Four letters, can you do that for me? Okay, I can't even see people respond back. Four letters, I just want you to remember four letters for me. 
that's it. When you go to university or school, you learn things for an hour, 90 minutes. But for today's session, I just want you to remember four letters. And these are what I call the foundations of communication or effective communication. So four letters. Number one is the letter A. Now, the letter A, again, I usually ask, do you know what the A stands for? But I can't see anyone's face. So the letter A stands for arms, right? This, this entire thing. Your arms and your body language is very, very important. Why? Let me give you, let me, let me give you the reason as to why. As you can see, I've got my hands up. Five fingers, five fingers. According to, according to the American Journal of Psychology, 55% of effective communication is your body language. So how you use your arms, 55%. 38% is your voice. Are you engaging? Are you changing it up? And get this, only 7% is the words that come out of your mouth. 7%. So frankly, people don't even care what you say. Their attention, how engaged they are, if they're comfortable with you, is all about how you're saying it. Remember, that's why I use the example of Daniel Ricardo. All the funny videos you've seen on YouTube that he does, the reason people in, like him and you know are admiring his just personality is because of his body language, his voice, the way he says it. I don't even know half the things he says, but the reality is the way he says it, the way he communicates, that charisma, that excitement, that first impression, body language. And so the first letter that I want to emphasize and you can do at the event, uh, the Pathways event, and especially when you're talking to people, use your arms. Now, oftentimes you'll hear, hear hand gestures, right? Hand gestures. But what is your hand? Your hand is only this component. That's your hand. Your arm is your hand, your, your forearms, your entire shoulder. This is your arms. Instead of focusing on the hands, when I'm talking to you, I'm not going to be like, hey, everyone, today I'm talking about public speaking or communication. That doesn't look right. That's why I don't talk about hand gestures. You talk about arm gestures. Hey, everyone, today we're going to talk about communication, but effective communication. Do you see the difference? Priyanka, thank you for nodding. At least I'm getting some sort of response back. <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah. Wow. Who knew? Who knew, right? It's like the fundamental things. And even let's say you, the event you're going to have is in person. Fantastic. The dynamic of having online meetings. We've got a rectangle right here, right? The way we use our body language is very important in how welcoming you make someone else feel, how engaging you are. If I came to you today and I was just like, Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about communication and networking. It's very important. It's just my head bobbing. After a while, you're just going to be like, I am tired of this person. I'm going to go on Instagram, scroll through TikTok. I'm bored. But if I utilize my body language in this rectangle that I've been given, hey, everyone. So body language is very important. Your arms and your hand. Do you see when I use my body language, you're immediately, even subconsciously, you're just staring at my arms when I tell you to when I point at my arms, when I point at my you know, hands, subconsciously, when you use your body language, you keep people engaged. And if you keep them engaged and you're saying the right words as well, they feel more, much more comfortable. And so your body language, especially when it comes to networking, is very, very important. Your body language equates to confidence. It equates to trust. If you, ha if you have your hands behind your back when you're talking to an executive or a CEO or you're networking at the event, They'll be like, oh, this person probably isn't ready. They're, they're a bit un unsure, insecure. If you've got your arms like this when you're talking to someone, there's no trust in that. Keep it free. Keep it as open as possible. I know it's very uncomfortable. For me, naturally, my arms would be in my pockets. That's my most natural state. When I'm walking around, I love that. It's very natural. I don't even have to think, thought, think twice. But the reality is when you're communicating, and when you want to have comfort and effective communication, Use your arms more. Force it out. Try it once. It be uncomfortable. Try it again three times. But use your arms as much as possible. Again, 55% is your body language. Second letter. Again, there's only four letters. Is V, as we spoke about. Now, V stands for voice. Again, 38% is your voice. And 7% is the words that you say. Why is voice important? Let me tell you. Especially when you're talking to networking, communication. If I came today and said, welcome everyone, today we're going to be talking about networking and communication. 
Priyanka, slide three, please. Slide four. So slide five. You're going to fall asleep. I'm going to fall asleep on myself as well. That is very boring. Nobody's engaged. Nobody will take me seriously because my tone of voice is already very limited. You're going to be like, okay, I'd rather talk to someone else. Oh, that person's using their body language. I'd rather talk to that person more. Your voice is what keeps them, keeps people engaged. So if you can vary your voice, I know sometimes it's very uncomfortable. Naturally, we might be very monotone or we might be tired. But the reality is your voice is your superpower. We all have a unique voice. Utilize that. How do we utilize that? Tone. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. There's a difference between the two. You can express yourself. You can express your charisma. You can express how confident you are using your voice. And so one of the activities we usually do in person, but we can do it here. I won't be able to see anyone, but try it in your own um, time. There are two things. Number one, tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are very, very good for your enunciation and your clarity. Funnily enough, when I first started Breathe, one of the first videos I did on TikTok was three uh, was a tongue twister that makes you become a better communicator. It was literally just my face, a tongue twister I put on the screen. That hit 2.4 million views. And I was just like, what? Why do people care about this? Because one, tongue twisters are fun to do. It's fun to challenge you. But two, it very much improves your communication, enunciation, your words coming out clear. So I challenge you before you go to the P Pathways event, for instance, if you're in the car or if you're in public transport, you don't even have to utter it loudly. Say some tongue twisters. I can send through an entire resource afterwards, but tongue twisters really do improve your enunciation, but it also makes you confident because you're like, okay, I prepared for it. My clarity and how I use my words, articulation will be great because I've got those tongue twisters. Again, this isn't me making this stuff up. This is research back. This is evidence back when it comes to communication. And number two, to help with your voice and not more so about articulation, but more so your voice, humming. Professional journalists, presenters, public speakers, before they go on stage, before TV presenters start reading the news, they do humming exercises. They go very loud and then they go very high pitched and they alternate between the two. I won't try this now because I've been told this is recorded and it's going to be on YouTube and I don't want to be embarrassed for the rest of my life. But do you get the gist? When it comes to humming, utilize that as much as possible. Because again, it's very cold in the morning, right? Very, very cold. When you get into your car, what do we do first and foremost? We turn it on, we let it heat up for a, for a few minutes and then we start driving. If we get into the car automatically when it's when it's very cold, we turn it on and we just start driving immediately, what's going to happen? The car's going to stop. It's going to completely slow down. The car hasn't warmed up yet. That's the exact same with your voice. You need to warm your vocal cords up if you want to change your voice tone, be enthusiastic, be excited. Because we all have a morning voice, right? We know how that feels. But then over time, when you drink some water, you know, talk for a few, a few sentences, you get your normal voice back. All about warming up your vocal cords. And again, 38% is your voice. So do the very small things that help you with that. Hopefully that makes sense. I'd, re I'd, I'd ask if that makes sense, but um, hopefully so far you're with me. Yep. Fantastic. And so third letter. And again, there's only four letters. Only four letters I want you to remember. Letter number three is eye contact. Right now, I know eye contact in different cultures, in different contexts, some re require, some are prohibited from it. And so, my rule of thumb is when it comes to eye contact, it's important because you want to give people the attention, right? You want to give, make them feel like you're looking at them, they're comfortable. But if you're not allowed to make eye contact, I always like talking uh, when I'm mentioning look at the eyebrows, look at the eyebrows, look at the hairline, whatever it is. You don't have to stare at them and stare into their souls, but just briefly look at that region because they don't know that, right? They don't know that you're not looking at them, but giving them someone their attention and focus is all about looking at them. It's one thing about having body language and your voice. But if you don't look at them, if I'm looking this way and say, talking about public speaking is very important. You're just going to be like, something's wrong with this person. Why are they looking here? We're not there eye contact or at least in the direction of the audience or the people you're speaking to or if you're in a group setting at the event whatever it is 
make sure you give them the focus. More than eye contact, focus is very important. So my rule of thumb, uh, another one, especially if you're talking in a group, look at three people. So for instance, if you're giving a, you know, if you're pre presentation in front of a lot of people, for instance, right, you might have to do that in, in the program or later on. Look at three uh, people in the room. So one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. It's very hard to, you know, be on stage or speaking to an audience and you're having to look at everyone. It's very intimidating, right? But just focus on three people or three things. I remember I gave a, uh, a, talk, a TED talk a couple of months ago and I focused on three things in the audience. On the left, there was a water bottle. In the middle, there was a coffee cup holder that somebody was drinking and right, it was a school bag of some sort. But I was just alternating, talking freely, but alternating on those three directions. To the audience or to the group members that you're talking to or you're communicating to, they think, oh, this person's so confident. They're, they're looking at all of us. They're looking fantastic. I want to be like that person. But you know, when you're making eye contact, when you're giving focus, when you're using positive body language, you're just looking at a school bag on the right. You're looking at a coffee cup. None of it is uncomfortable. The school bag can't look back at you and, you know, just go like, oh, you're not getting emotionally reactive at that. You're just looking at three things. Your focus is still there, but you're just looking at different aspects. So that's a rule of thumb, especially when it comes to like different cultures. I know, especially for my culture, looking at people, eye contact is one of those things that you can't do. Whereas in, in the Australian setting, for instance, in corporate settings, all these settings, eye contact is very important. So a way around that is if you're a little uncomfortable in that regard, look at things in directions, focus the direction. Because the main focus isn't looking at people's irises and just staring at them. It's just about giving someone focus. So give them focus by looking at their direction. Position yourself in that direction. Trust me, it makes a massive, massive difference. And finally, before we um, wrap up to the networking side of things, F. Now, the letter F is the most important part about this entire, you know, in entire model. A is for arms, B is for voice, E is for eye contact, and F stands for fun. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Oh, this is so romanticized, fun. What am I, two-year-old? No. The reason I mentioned fun is because when it comes to communication, when it comes to public speaking, when it comes to networking, when it comes to job interviews, whatever it is, the main reason people are afraid of it is because of that fear. But what is that fee? Let's reframe that fee. Let's create a mindset for that fee. That fee is your adrenaline, right? The adrenaline that you feel, that butterfly, the, the wobbly legs, the, oh, I'm going to stuff up. What's going to happen? Uh, I don't know what to do. That entire thing is just adrenaline. What most of us do, and it's a very human thing to do, is we focus on that adrenaline to be fee. I've got a fear of communication. I'm afraid to talk to people. This person makes so much money. Who am I talking to them? right? That fee takes over the fight or flight. But if we can reframe that, that fee, that adrenaline, again, adrenaline is very human. Your brain releases adrenaline. It's very, very human. If we can reframe that fee to talk about fun and the excitement of talking to someone, the excitement of talking to a group or an audience, life will be so much easier when it comes to communication networking reframing the idea oh i have to talk to the the ceo of motorsports no i get to talk to the ceo of motorsports that excitement what can i learn from this person what can this person teach me instead of thinking what if i stuff up saying something to this person what if i lose my position instead of that fee reframe that and come back to this model of fun and think about okay what can i learn from this person how can i you know progress in my career or get some advice that's why the f is at the beginning yes it's nice because the model's called fave and it works out as a favorite fave all these things but the f is the most important part because it's all about having fun it's only fearful if you make it out to be fearful so f stands for fun a stands for arms v stands for voice e stands for eyes and these are the fundamentals the reason we call this as fundamentals is because, again, you'll have your event on the 19th. And I assure you, a very human thing will be sometimes you'll speak to your, your friends, awesome. And then you'll see someone who's like, you know, someone you admire in the industry, in the motorsport industry. And you, you'll just be like, oh, I'm afraid. I can't talk to this person. What do I say? What do I look like? How do I present myself? 
when you have those feelings, again, it's a very human thing. I get them all the time in networking settings. You just come back to this model. Say, okay, I'm afraid. I've got all these jittery feelings. But okay, all I have to do is use my arms, make it positive. My voice, <clears throat> okay, I've got that ready. And just all focus on them. I'll look, make some eye contact. And most importantly, I don't have to speak to this person. I get to speak to this person. I get to actually have that conversation. Does that make sense? I have it. That's brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Priyanka. You're, you're the superstar today. I'm actually getting. <laughs> uh, but hopefully, if you have any questions as well, please feel free to put it down into the, the chat function. Really, really keen to get back to everyone's questions going forward. And I know this, this could be a lot for someone, uh, for some people, but at the same time, I want to make this as accessible as possible. Um, so if you ha do have any questions, feel free to let me know. I've already seen some questions. I'll get around to ask you, answering them um, ASAP. But now we've talked about the foundations of communication, effective communication. Now I just to touch upon networking. But before I touch upon networking, there's this quote that I love mentioning when it comes to um, networking or being in a setting, especially for instance, your event, when you have to talk to a lot of people that you don't know, you're a little afraid. How do you navigate that? This is a quote by Brene Brown, who I'm a massive fan of. And she uses this quote when people ask her about, you know, you give talks on stages, you're so confident, you're such a good communicator. How did you overcome it? How did you overcome that fear? And her response was, what are you talking about? I'm very afraid of communicating in front of an audience or public speaking. And the person looked at her and was like, what do you mean? You sell out crowds, you make, you're so famous. And this was her quote. It's not about being less fearful. It's about being a bit more brave. The fear will always be there when you're talking to new audiences, new communities, new environments. The fear will always be there. Trust me. It's a very human thing. That's, let's actually acknowledge that. It's a very human thing. It's a fight or flight. I don't know this person. I'm very afraid. Or I know this person has you know, a lot of followers on Instagram or LinkedIn. Are they better than me? All these things are very human things that we compare all these things. But the reality is the better part to focus on is being a bit more brave. To again say, I don't have to talk to this person. I get to talk to this person. And how do I talk to this person and network and have that conversation and build that relationship? Again, very simple things. Having fun with it using your arms, your voice, and just looking at them, eye contact. That enough will get you into a room and have a very comfortable conversation, a back and forth, crack some jokes if you want to. But these are the foundational things. So the next time you forget, what do I say? How do I say this? Come back to this. And so now I'd like to touch upon networking and in terms of the motorsport industry and how you can you know, go to the events, which are absolutely fantastic. Uh, Priyanka was telling me about the events. They're incredible opportunities to take your shot, to learn a lot, to grow, to build networks. But what do you say? What do you actually talk about to, to people in networking settings? And the best part that I can come back to in, to summarize is your personal brand. In all networking settings, it's all about your personal brand. And I know there's a lot on your screen right now, but this is basically just things we've asked um, other, other young people, other early career professionals. So what is a personal brand? A personal brand is basically making yourself known to other people. It's marketing yourself to stand out by being yourself. And what happens when you have a personal brand? You get to expand your network, meet people, learn communication skills, interpersonal skills, all these things. Now, say you've got the event coming up and you are speaking to someone, you've got a one-on-one -on -one situation. What do you say? So there are three things I want you to remember that you can note down that work and has worked for me in every single occasion. These are three things that you get to ask and they've worked. And why I say this and why this is important, because a lot of the times in your career, whether you message someone on LinkedIn or social media, you'll be like, hey, can I learn from you? Can we grab a coffee? Um, I'd love to learn from you. Can we jump on a Zoom call? Fantastic. If people respond to you and they want to teach you and um, help you out, fantastic. That's awesome. But what do you do after that? What do you do when you actually meet a random person for coffee? That 30 minutes, that 40 minutes, that one hour, however long it is, what do you ask them? This is what you ask them. So number one that I'd love, love for you to note down, and it has worked in many cases for me, is 
what piece of advice would you give your younger self? So in most cases, you'd be speaking to someone who's like an executive or very accomplished, or you admire them because of their achievements, right? You want to learn from them. And in most cases, you'd probably be younger than them or in a stage in life or a growth or career that is a bit, you know, younger than them to what they've achieved. So the best question to ask in that capacity and keep a good conversation going is, what advice would you have for a younger, younger you or a younger person who's aspiring to be in the motorsport industry or in your field? The reason I tell you to ask that is because two things. Number one, people love talking about themselves. People love sharing their stories. You get to build that friendship, that relationship. But number two, and this will come back to the next part of um, next part of the advice, is when it comes to networking, in most cases, you, you want to get something out of it, right? You want to learn something. In best cases, you want to get a job or an opportunity or you know a trial run of something. You want something out of it. But when it comes to networking, it's about building the relationship. But how can you build a relationship, but also get something positive out of it? This question about what would you give advice to your younger self? A lot of the reactions and a lot of the responses, I'd say in most cases are, oh, I wish um, I would say to never give up, you know, hustle or do these things, but also speak to people that can help you or speak to mentors or get mentors. So that this is advice that you'll get in most cases. But the reality is when you ask that, you're asking them basically to reflect on their lives and what they would have liked if they were starting out or at a young age. And in most cases, at least in some cases, they'll be like, okay, get a mentor, get somebody who can support you, who can sponsor you. And then they'll say, okay, so I wish I had somebody who mentored me. Why don't I mentor this person that's actually asking me this question? It's a bit of like a reflective thing. And in, be- in, in the best cases, which has worked for me in many cases, I've asked, hey, what, what's one thing that you would have changed in your career or you know, you, you learned that you'd change for a young person? And they'd be like, oh, mate, look, it'll be awesome if you, know, you never give up, you need to work hard, but also find good mentors that can support you. I wish I had, and they just have that stop moment. And they're like, hey, mate, do you want, do you want mentorship? We can do this every three months. We can have a conversation. All you did was that you asked them about their own experiences. And I guarantee you that most people in any career you're in, doesn't have to be just in motor, motorsport. Every person has, has gone through a sense of struggle, a sense of wishing somebody helped them, a sense of, I wish somebody gave me hope. I wish somebody supported me. And so if you can ask them about a piece of advice, they'll reflect on and see that you're young, you're aspiring, you're energetic that might be a reflection point that could be a lifelong mentor for you. So make the most of that question. It's, it, I like to call it it's a bit of a cheat code because you get to ask them because you're learning. But if they have that reflection moment, you could get a lifelong mentor, a lifelong support, a lifelong sponsor, whatever it is. People love talking about themselves, but they also love talking about things that they wish they had. And so if they can give them back to you, that's amazing. Yes, Bianca? Yeah, I'm just going to jump in here uh, with the Girls on Track program. The ambassadors and champions are all uh, mentoring girls as well. So if you're able to ask these questions and build an impression, you're highly likely to get that um, mentor-mentee relationship going. And I can see a few of the participants that have joined today have actually already been paired up with mentors. So get your pens and papers out make note of everything Joanne's saying fantastic again when it comes to words like networking and mentorship it sounds so scary it's like oh what is this who do i talk to it's not it's very fundamental question that you get asked and two more questions um because i know we're running out of time number two is day in the life ask them what does day in the life look like for you one you're learning a lot from you know the work that they do but also You get to choose, okay, do I want their lives? Do I want the role that they're in? Do I actually feel passionate about it? And the way you can, you know, figure that out is just ask, so what does a typical day in the life look like for you? What's the work-life balance like? What's something you enjoy? And the third question that I love using, and I've used this in job interviews in the past. So I, I use this in like opportunities. What's your favorite part about your work? Again, people love talking about themselves. It's a very human thing. But if you can ask them to talk about what's their favorite thing, and if you resonate with that, you can have even better uh, conversations, communications, 
follow-up questions. Because again, all these questions are very positive. Don't go in and say, what do you hate about your, what, hate about your job? What's something you failed at? Great. These are questions you can ask, but that's not what you start off with. That's not where you build trust. You need some sort of trust and vulnerability before you can ask those questions. So three questions. What is a piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Hopefully get that reflection moment and they'll be like, oh, I can, I can actually give this to the person that they're asking. That'd be an ideal situation. And in most cases, it works. Number two, tell me a day in the life. If it's a weekday, how's the work-life balance on weekends? Do you have to work weekends? Learn about their lifestyle. People love talking about their lifestyles and maybe you can pick up a few habits that they do and implement them into your life, if anything. And number three, what's the favorite thing about your work? Learn more. Have that learning cap on. I know a lot of the times you just want to go in and get, a, get some sort of opportunity, but that's not realistic, right? Try to focus on building that relationship. Just having fun, getting to know someone. And if they feel comfortable, and if you're giving off those comfortable vibes as well, you'll get those opportunities. That, that comes naturally. But focus on having that learning cap on. Networking is all about learning from one another. I know in the networking context, like networking is all about business goals, financial things, all these things. No, networking is all about building relationships, allowing you to trust each other and then focusing on the other things like opportunities, collaborations. But learn from each other. Know what we want from each other. And so those are three questions. And then obviously another one is follow up, right? If you can get their contact details or LinkedIn, follow up the next day and say, hey, it was lovely meeting you. Thank you so much for coming. I loved when you talked about your experiences in XYZ. If you're free or ever in Melbourne, would love to grab a coffee or a Zoom call in the next few months. Following up makes, them, makes you very memorable. And it's also a very nice thing to do. It's very kind. It's a very kind and gentle etiquette. People will remember you. And so if you get their email, if you get their LinkedIn, my suggestion, 12 hours after the event, or at least at max 24 hours, send them an email, thank them for their time. Time is the most valuable currency. And so finally, just to wrap up before we take questions, um, there's just three things that I want to cover in terms of networking, just very briefly. Number one, we mentioned get excited yourself to get others excited. So when you're having conversations, feel the excitement. If you can feel excited, someone else will feel excited. Again, if I came today and said, motorsports is awesome. Motorsports is fun. Do you feel any sort of excitement from my voice? No, I feel very bored. Motorsport is amazing. I'm, at, I'm an actual fanatic. Do you remember that episode? The way you change your voice and your excitement translates in how people feel. Communication is all about making someone feel the way that you want them to feel. It's not about talking at them or talking to them. It's about how do they feel when they talk to you. So if you get excited or you get happy or you get energized, they'll feel the same. Number two, stop comparing with other people. This is one of the main things, no matter what age you are, you need to stop. We all have our own styles of communication, what we're comfortable in, what we're confident in. Own that. Embrace that. For me, I use my hands a lot. Naturally, I always use my hands a lot. But there was a time when I was just like, I use my hands too much. Look at Tony Robbins on YouTube. Look at Brene Brown on YouTube. They barely use their hands that are like me. I should stop. But the reality is if I stop, I'm restricting myself. So you have your own style, utilize that, utilize your strengths. And finally, before you grab any questions is the basic mindset when it comes to networking, you're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to say things that you shouldn't have. You're going to say things where you're going to think about in the middle of the night, you're like, oh, I should not have asked the CEO this question. What was I thinking? We've all been there. I've said some ridiculous things, which I shouldn't have when I was 17, 18, but I was learning. I was failing, but I was failing forward. I was learning from those you know, miseries or those mistakes. And trust me, you learn much more when you make mistakes than when things are going right. So have that mindset of failing forward. Have that mindset that, okay, things can go wrong. That's okay. That's okay that things can go wrong, but you'll learn from it. And again, every single person you admire, and I'll, wrap up with this every single person you admire whether they're executives at the event or you know really really you know formula with two stars formula three stars whatever it is every single person started from somewhere they all started with that dream with that and with that ambition with that hustle with that aspiration every single one of them so don't feel like you're, a, you're the odd one out we're all learning so fail forward have fun and most importantly just enjoy it 
enjoy the process. You never know what you'll attract if you give off the right energy, the positive vibes and positive leadership. You're all leaders already for coming here today, being part of this program. Own that. Make the most of it. That's for me. I told you I'm going to stand for seven, ten minutes, but hopefully we're still good time. Yeah, we can run a little over. That's all right. Um, I'll start shooting questions your way, Jayan. Thank you so much for that. I've learned a lot myself. That's amazing. Um, first one, what is the best tip for making a good first impression? Best tip for making a good first impression? Again, I'm going to refer back to Daniel Ricardo and that photo how you present yourself and that is very very fundamental to it yeah Priyanka say you know conveying it very nicely smile right if I come to you Priyanka like oh do we have a webinar today oh do we oh I'm not smiling I look like I don't even want to be here I don't even care about this but if I come and say oh we've got a webinar today that's awesome okay so how long do we have there's a difference between the two there's a difference between the energy the vibes that you give off if you smile your first impression is, oh, this person's charismatic. This person's, you know, welcoming. I've got a smile. Let me continue talking to this person. Let me be more curious with this person. But if you don't smile, again, first impression is what you see. Unfortunately, it's the world that we live in. It's not what you say. You could have gold mines coming out of your tongue, but it's how you, how you present yourself. So if you can smile and just have that energy, just open energy, not just, you know, arms closed and like, hi, how are you? Have that energy best first impression and i remember your energy the first call we had you were <laughs> so excited yeah it's still you know that's the first impression like you're saying and it's stuck so i still remember it from a couple of weeks ago so definitely the right thing to do um next one what is the best way to approach a job interview keeping ceos in the back of your mind should we be doing something specific to get off on the right foot this is for coming from someone who deals with a lot of anxiety. Yeah. So what is the best way to approach a job interview? Again, this is, this is a bit of a different one compared to networking communication. Um, and again, I naturally have a lot of anxiety growing up. I have naturally anxiety, so I can definitely resonate with that. Number one is obviously prepare. Preparation is key. So in the context of job interviews, for instance, there's a few things you can do. And I'll be very brief with this. Number one, know the job you're applying for. So if you're applying for, let's say, Motorsport Australia, right? You're applying for a job. You're going to be asked questions about strengths, weaknesses, all these typical things. But to really stand out, know the organization, know the company. So search out Motorsport Australia values or mission statement. Know who, who's running the organization. You know, what are the values? And then all your responses you're very well prepared because if they ask you a question about why do you want to work here, you just talk about uh, the motorsport values are you know collaboration and I'm a massive person. I'm a very creative person. I love collaborating. I love working in a team. You're very prepared. You're very well prepared because you know the things you're going to talk about. And that comes with doing your research, being prepared. And number two, um, another thing is just impromptu, learning how to speak on your, on your, on your toes. Again, personal branding is very important there, but how do you speak on your toes? And maybe we can do another session about impromptu talking, but learn that skill. One thing that I did during lockdown that has helped me a lot is every, every night for about five minutes, I would be in front of my computer screen. I would text a friend and ask, hey, give me a random topic, any topic. It could be science. It could be cricket. It could be ants. And I'd record myself for one minute talking about that topic, random topic again. And then I'd watch it back and I'd take notes. Okay. My eye contact wasn't good here. I used too many filler words. My voice didn't change nicely here. Whatever it is, I give myself feedback. I record it and be accountable. And that way I'm learning, okay, am I good at speaking on my spot, on the spot? Am I not? What can I improve on? Literally five minutes a day. It helps you tremendously. And number three, again, you know, have fun with it again. Job interviews sound so scary, but the reality is, if you don't have fun, if you don't ex get excited yourself, that person will be like, why, why should I hire this person? There's no energy. They're not going to bring anything to my team. Just be yourself. I know it sounds very romanticized, like be myself. Come on. Am I in a kindergarten? No, it's very true. The reason you hear that phrase a lot is because if you can be authentic, it becomes much easier. People see right through your fakeness if you're being someone else. Be authentic, be yourself, and just have that energy. 
again, it's a long topic on job interviews, but I hope I can cover a few things there. No, I agree with that. I think smiling as well. It just, you know, releases the stress and the tension from your end and even uh, the other person who's, who's looking at you for the first time. Um, and just to add to that, I think the best thing to do, one of the, one of the good things to do to make an impression is the follow-up email that Jahan spoke about earlier. So if you've gone in for an interview, always follow up thanking the person for their time. And uh, sometimes if you've forgotten to say something in the interview, you can actually send an email saying, I'm so sorry, I forgot to mention this, this, and this. Um, yeah, so just adding to that. Um, next question, how would you best describe public speaking? How should we think to make it less confronting? Absolutely. I love this question. Three in four people have a fear of public speaking. Three in four, right? Most people are afraid of public speaking. It's a very human thing. So if we can express it and reframe our mindset to that and realize, okay, if I'm talking to someone in a group or in front of a stage or in front of an audience, chances are 98% of people who are listening to me, they're just like, oh, I could never do that. They have so much courage. They have, they're so brave. They're awesome for doing it, right? Public speaking is so scary because you're like, oh, I, I'm probably the only one that's, get, that's afraid of it. I'm probably the only one that's going to stuff up. No, every, I would say almost even me, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified of public speaking. Every time I go on stage, my heart rate is, is high. I'm like, mouth is dry. Where's the water? But the reality is I just reframe that and say, okay, everyone's afraid. What could go wrong? Let me be excited. Let me live in the moment. When else will there be all these people in the room giving me all this attention? I love attention, right? If you can reframe that and have fun with it and realize everyone's afraid. Nobody's a born natural public speaker. You just have to develop that and do more of it in small capacities and small capacities. And then you can sell out massive rooms. It just requires you to just understand, okay, everyone's afraid. It's a very human thing. Again, we talked about adrenaline. Adrenaline is literally a hormone, a stress hormone that's, you can't not control unless you're a Martian or, you know, from another planet. It's a very human thing. So if you can think of it in that capacity, it's nothing because everyone sees you as being courageous when you speak in a room or on a stage. Own that moment because again, three in four people have fear of public speaking. People are afraid of public speaking more than afraid of death. The fact that you're doing it, you're courageous. You're a superstar. Own that. That's how I think of it. Fantastic. <laughs> Just thinking of, you know, the, yeah, the, the, you know, that pit, that kind of pain you get in your stomach before you public speak. Uh, but you're right, it's an opportunity. So just rephrase the way you look at it and hopefully, yeah, good to go. Um, what is the best way to approach getting contact details from someone? So LinkedIn, et cetera. Yeah. So I think for me, the best way would be emails get trying to get their emails through the conversation. So you can have the conversation for 60 seconds or three minutes or 10 minutes, but always try to end it up with, oh, thank you so much for your chat. Do you happen to have your email or better yet? I don't know if people still use it, but like a business card, get their business card, get their emails. Emails are the way forward because we're all on emails, no matter how much we want it or not, get their emails. And if not, if you're unable to get the email in whatever context, just find them on LinkedIn connect with them and send them a message there and say, Hey, it was lovely speaking to you yesterday. Thank you so much. Another tip that I'm, uh, that I should have emphasized at the beginning is when you do the follow-up emails, yes. say thank you so much for coming. Mention someone, something you spoke to them about, or if they mentioned a book or something that they're passionate about, mention that in the follow-up because it shows that you focus on the conversation. You actually cared about that conversation. It's a very small thing to do, but it makes them feel very warm and fuzzy because they're like, oh, Priyanka remembered this that I just mentioned out of the blue. I want to build a relationship with this person. I want to help this person, support this person. It's a very small thing to do, but as humans, we love it. So ideally emails, try to get the emails, but then there's also LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook, they're there, but try to keep it professional. If you want to have that mentorship, emails or LinkedIn, best way to go. Yeah, perfect. I think with following up, it also shows that you were paying attention. And then obviously that listening component is super important. Um, is it inappropriate to walk up to someone and introduce yourself, for example, at the track? What are some of the things you could say to build a connection? Oh, it is definitely not inappropriate. If anything, I would encourage that as much as possible. 
if you see someone just standing there with a drink in hand or if they're talking to someone and then you feel like they're about to leave that conversation, that's your opportunity. That's when you go and strike. Because especially if you can make eye contact and have that smile and if they smile back, gold. That's a golden moment. Start the conversation there. Like we mentioned about, hey, what's a day in the life like? How are you doing? The weather's very nice. The weather's a fantastic point of conversation. How's the weather been? Where, where, where do you live? Where are you from? And then start those conversations. And so I do really encourage, I know rejection is scary. That person could look at you and look away and speak to someone else. Could happen. Has happened to me many, many times, especially growing up, at, you know, when I first started my leadership journey. But don't be afraid of that. Because if you don't initiate that conversation, one, you'll never have that valuable conversation. And two, and most importantly, let me tell you this, most people are just waiting for someone to come and speak to them. Most people are very, very anxious in social settings. Again, it's a very, very human thing. So the fact that you're going there and you're starting the conversation, some people are just waiting for someone to do that. So do that and you know make their day. Trust me, it's, it's a very human thing. Just take as many chances as possible. Totally agree. I think most people in at the track, the motorsport community in general is just amazing and extremely supportive. So if you can go out to the track, I think we've said it a couple of times at the Girls and Track Pathways, make yourself known. It is important, highly important. And hopefully some of the tools Joanne has given you today can empower you to have those conversations. Um, next one, best advice for an aspiring motor journalist. Asking and finding the best questions without nervousness, confidence when approaching someone. I think you've kind of covered this, unless you want to add something else. Yeah, I think just one thing to add, obviously, I don't have a journalism background or anything, but being curious about people. So I think when, you, when you're when asking questions, a lot of the times we're afraid of who we are. Like, are they going to respond back to me? Are they paying attention? Take all the attention away from you. You don't matter in that situation. As a journalist, when you're asking questions, what matters is those questions, being, being curious about that person, put them in the spotlight, give them the attention. Don't worry if your hair is looking funny or doesn't matter. It's nothing about you. Be curious. Again, keep that learning cap on and you'll have the confidence because again, why don't we have confidence? Because we feel like we're deficient in something, right? Forget that. You don't exist in that situation. The only thing that exists is the question and maybe a, maybe a smile. That's it. So you take the pressure off you, yourself and just focus on the communication. What is it? Communication? The questions you know, being curious about them, cracking a joke or two. I'm trying really hard to use my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's 724, you know. <laughs> I have six minutes to get it right. <laughs> um, next question. Uh, if you have a mentor, how do you go about communicating? As in being keen to learn of them, but the communication from said mentor is not received. For example, I've been communicating with a mentor when talking about gaining experience, nothing has come of it. And I've reached out many times. I haven't got a reply. I want to reach out again, but don't want to be that annoying young person. <laughs> annoying young person. No. Um, well, I have two answers to this. And this is depending on your context or whatever situation you're in. Number one, if the person was right for you, if the person was a right mentor, they would respond. Right? If they're not responsive, they don't care, don't force it out they probably don't have time or they have such some situation going there. But if they wanted to mentor you, they would. That's the, that's the bottom line. And number two, don't be afraid of being that annoying young person. If you find value in this person and you just feel like, oh, they probably don't have time or they're a bit tired or they just forgot, there is no such thing as being an annoying young person. Persevere. Mm. Because if you persevere, that will send them a signal and say, oh, this person actually cares about learning from me. This person actually sending me emails or LinkedIn or even just messaging me on Instagram. They're serious about it. And that might be a turning point, especially if you're talking to someone, you know, who has a lot of experience. So in, in one side of things, if you feel like you're getting frustrated, find another mentor, help, you know, there's plenty of mentors, people who want to help out and give community service or good in that nature. They're probably not the right person for you or they're probably not ready for mentorship at that moment. But number two, and more, more important, I'd say as a young person, again, I'm still 21. I'm still, you know, speaking to a lot of mentors, learning. Show them that you're committed. Show your commitment. Be perseverant. Because that shows to them that you actually care. You're not just there 
you know, for a photo or to put on LinkedIn and say, hey, I spoke to this person. No, you actually are curious. So perseverance shows a lot about your character. And again, this depends on your context, but that's what I would say. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, any other questions? You might give it a minute. Um, if you have something, please put it in the chat. Nothing coming through. Well, a little good news. We might have Jain actually join us at, at the stand down event. Um, so hopefully whoever's online today and there, um, you'll have the opportunity to meet him face to face, uh, maybe try what he's taught us tonight on him and get some <laughs> feedback. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try it. You see, I'm, I'm trying to use my hands already. Um, <laughs> We, we really hope that the tools and the discussion points from tonight's webinar empower you to communicate and, of course, network more effectively. If you have any further questions that you like or uh, any further questions, if you, have, if you want more information about the Girls on Track program, please reach out, um, girls on track at motorsport.org.au. Uh, we've got Alia here saying thank you very much. So much good advice. Thank you so much, Alia, for joining and Talia for sending through all those questions. Um, Zahin, would you like to say anything else before we're done? No, it's just, you know, thank you for having me. I think this isn't like an overnight thing. You can't just come here and talk about public speaking. You really have to put it into action. So start small, you know, speak to your family, speak to your friends you know, utilize these fundamental models and trust me, you'll get to a stage where this becomes second nature. You become comfortable, comfortable. Like I said, I started off with a lot of social anxiety growing up, did not think I'd be doing this at all. I thought I'd be behind the scenes, probably like a doctor or something, you know? So it takes time, but if you can do the things consistently, I promise, promise, promise you in no time, you'll be on the TEDx stage giving a TED talk, right? It, it, it takes consistency. But if you can have fun with it, life becomes so much easier. I like the way you used your voice over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. And hopefully see you around the racetrack soon. And thank you again, Jahan. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Take care, everyone. See ya. <laughs>